Hi, everyone. Welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. I'm Rabbi Abby Shirovsky, Director of Intergroup Relations and Rabbi in Residence for the JCRC of Greater Washington. I am honored to be here today with Reverend Dr. Christopher Zacharias, uh, a dear friend and colleague from the John Wesley AME Zion Church in Washington, D.C. Welcome, Pastor. Well, thank you, Rabbi. So glad to be present in this virtual space and along uh, able to be able to see and dialogue with you once again. As we begin, I, I want to share a piece of the statement that JCRC put out this week. I'm just going to read a short part of it. The Jewish people will not be bystanders. Our organizations and our community are called to solidarity with people of color in this moment. We value our long-standing role as mutual friends and allies to the African-American community. We are committed to dismantling institutionalized racism in America. We are in conversation with our African-American partners to listen, learn, and support. That's what brings us today to, to this conversation. Back in January, I had the opportunity to speak from your pulpit uh, and to talk about anti-Semitism and what is happening, what was happening in the Jewish community and to look at the relationship between the African American community and the Jewish community and was greeted with open arms and blessing and love by your congregants. And I'm so grateful that you are joining me here. I want to give you that same space and return that 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 opportunity of sharing this painful time and what we can do as a Jewish community to support you. Thank you, Rabbi. We are so grateful and blessed to have you with us this past January to speak in regards to anti-Semitism as well as the parallelisms of those and the similarities. With that same vein is something that I would suggest to um, my sisters and brothers of the Jewish faith to speak in that same passion, speak in that same uh, unction and desire and passion in regards to Black Lives Matter. Yes, all lives matter, but until Black Lives Matter, it does not in sense help for all of humanity to realize that Black lives do matter as well as a priority of this particular day because it is painful, just as it is painful for Jews um, to be received derogatory statements or to look at in a second class way, it's the same sediment for us. So we are bleeding the same cause, even though it's in a different uh, viewpoint, but we are on the same path together. And with your joint efforts of speaking up and rising up, dialoguing within your synagogues, as well as the temples alongside of us and other ethnicities that are out there protesting and expressing their First Amendment would be very helpful uh, for this particular cause and the causes of all of humanity. Thank you. It's always important to hear those words and to remember that Black Lives Matter. I, I was listening to you and thinking about the, the place of prophetic voice at a time like this. We can re we reach out to you know, our communities, but I think there's also an obligation that we have as clergy to other clergy. How do we raise our prophetic voices at a time when it's so painful and, and we ourselves are feeling the pain and the exhaustion? Pain with a purpose is what this prophetic call causes for us to do. And with that, God calls us to be unpopular, but yet popular with him, to be able to speak truths to powers as well as to bring about a transformational change. For both of us who uh, follow the Bible and specifically the Torah, we are now the Moseses that God is calling us out of back of Mount Nebat. Hey, let my people go. Go tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And that's all people as well as our own people from our own nationality. And that's the voice that we must continue to cause. For me, specifically as, as for Jesus, that we are that voice crying out in the wilderness. And that's where I'm standing firm on, in private, inside the church, and now specifically outside the church. We can no longer at this COVID-19 season, go to the synagogue, go to the house of faith or to churches, to worship our God. We're worshiping now, even through this dialogue of him 
And now specifically, God's allowing this COVID-19 situation to push us out of the building, get involved with the people because I am them and they are me. So believe that I am has sent you. And that's where the prophetic voice goes for. We know regardless of what we do, somebody is going to have an opinion. Somebody's not going to like it. But until we take on the firm voice of God and follow his voice only, then we will have peace. Because at the end of the day, it's him we have to answer to, no one else. Moving forward and where we go from here is not easy. It's not clear. It's painful, like you said, to to be that voice and to to pray for the people that we don't always agree with or or care for, but they're in our prayers nonetheless. And I've been sitting with that idea of grace in all of that. I'm curious. I'm curious how that resonates for you. Well, grace for us, of course, is that undeserving favor, that unmerited favor. And it's also the grace that God would utilize you and I, African-Americans and Jews, to be able to be his voice of change in the community and of saving grace. And at the same time, with that priestly blessing, we have been blessed to be an instrument, an instrument of change, to be a difference maker in this world today. That's who we are. And by the grace of God, we go. And by the grace of God, he'll keep us wherever we go. The same grace and blessing God said to Joshua after the death of Moses, my servant Moses is dead. Wherever you go, I will be with you. But remember, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. And meditate on my word both day and night. And we are formed by that. We are formed by that, shaped by that. And by that shaping of God's grace is how we're going to go. So may the grace of God be with you wherever you go. And that's where the grace I'm going to walk with. We've, we've shared some wonderful Torahs, created a really holy space here. And I, I am deeply grateful and appreciative of that. I hope that more dialogues like this, more discussions, um, more opportunities to share our text and, and our faith and for clergy of, of all faiths and, and races to be able to speak together and share their, their faith and, and their prayers for each other. I hope that can happen. But we want to continue to also cultivate this now and forever as we continue to dialogue, learning of each other, respecting each other's opinions, but working towards the common good for all of humanity, as well as the specific priorities of each particular race. So let's be intentional about that. Thank you so much for your time. I, I pray that your community remains safe. My prayers that you are being held, uh, being held in God's hands and uh, with blessing. And so likewise to you, Rabbi <laughs> Abby, and to all of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Yes. And we'll continue to uh, be in fellowship with you as we move forward. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.